Welcome to the Raising Cinephiles podcast, a show about passing on your love of cinema to the next generation. I'm your host, Jessica Cantor, and I have worked in all facets of the entertainment industry for the last 20 years and recently became a mom. Always remember that myself and guests are speaking from personal experience, not giving parenting advice. Let's go ahead and dive into the episode. We took a little two-week hiatus, and I'm so excited to be here today with Christina Yabara. Uh, she is currently the Director of Education and Public Engagement at the Academy Museum of Motion Pictures. She has 15 years of experience in arts and education, and I'm really excited to have you here today. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Amazing. I'll jump into our first question, which is, what is your first movie memory? My first movie memory was probably in the late 80s. There was a re-release to celebrate the anniversary of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. And so my mom took me with her best friend and her kids, and we all went to the theater, and they were giving out these gold coins, like commemorative, that had like the dwarfs and Snow Mm -hmm. White on it. And to me, I was like, this is what it's about. (laughs) Like, even though I was so little, I think I was only like five or six at the time. Yeah. Just going to see the film that was exciting, getting this little coin, you Mm -hmm. know, together. And I just really thought like, wow, this is so exciting to come to the theater. And it was felt like a a real celebration. And I thought this is going to be how it's going to always be when I go to the theater. (laughs) But um, I think that really like set me up for like enjoying going to the movies. It's an occasion. Yeah. 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 And so what was your movie experience growing up? How did, what did that, how did that take shape for you? Yeah. My mom is a, was really into movies. So Mm -hmm. she was, she would take us to the movies all the time. Like that was Mm -hmm. a big deal. And that was what she wanted to spend money on. Mm -hmm. Um, She raised myself, my brother and my sister um, as a single parent. So for her, it was like, yes, we can go to the park, but I want to enjoy myself. Let's go to the movies. So (laughs) we did that a lot. That was things that we would do on the weekend for like holiday breaks. I remember going to the theater after Thanksgiving, like on Thanksgiving, you Mm -hmm. still go to the theater and go see a movie. And we did that a lot growing up and, so I think it was really like her influence of like, that's something to do. That's something to enjoy. And yeah. we're all into it. Like all siblings. That's, and I, that's yeah. amazing. That reminds me of like the Jewish Christmas. I don't know if you've ever heard this, but it's Chinese food and movies. <laughs> cause that's all you can, that's all that's open. Right. So, cause we don't have a big family meal or anything happening. That's how we, that's what we would do. And that's how I remember the most family movies. I, the rest were kind of more independent for myself, but that was the movie time for us. Um, so who in your family got to choose what you were going to see? Um, usually my mom, but um, my older brother and older sister, cause I'm the youngest. So mm-hmm. as the youngest, I probably didn't get to choose it at all. <laughs> it was long for the ride. Um, but they, you know, had a lot of say and we all, obviously had different tastes um but i i'm glad that i grew up as the youngest because of that because they Mm -hmm. got to share what they're what they were into and i thought oh you know that's my brother's type of movie that's my sister's type of movie i too am the youngest sibling and in these conversations i find that younger siblings sometimes get exposed to cinema and storytelling that might be a little advanced for them and i'm curious if there's anything you learned early from movies and what what movies they might have been oh yeah definitely I think that was happening (laughs) (laughs) and my mom too I think as well she was just kind of like you guys get it you're you're mature enough I'm like um I'm eight Uh, (laughs) um but I think overall it kind of gives it gave me at least uh kind of like a bigger worldview like there's Mm -hmm. many different ways to tell a story there's you know stories from all over the world, you know, films, independent films, like I think I was exposed to a lot. And it's kind of funny that now that I have my own daughter, who's six, I'm, you know, way more protective of what she's seen or not seen Mm -hmm. than I think my mom was and my siblings were. But I mean, everybody's experience is different. And I think ultimately, though, it did lead me to want to be part of something that is about storytelling and telling Mm -hmm. your own story and Mm -hmm. seeing the value of that. Uh, yeah. at a age. So I think it kind of lent itself to that and the things that I'm interested in um, as an adult. And I think also kind of growing your empathy for mm-hmm. others is a big deal. And I think that helped as well. 
Yeah. A, a, a theme that comes up on the podcast a lot is, is utilizing stories to have conversations about what's happening in life. Mm-hmm. Sometimes a little before it's meant to happen so that they're prepared, so that it's not so focused on them and mm-hmm. they can speak about the situ- situation outside of themselves. Mm-hmm. I heard some really great stories around that, which I, I just love. Uh, that that idea of using cinema for that purpose. The other piece that resonated, which I feel like I've I've heard before, is that our parents' generation didn't have the well. One media landscape was really different than mm-hmm. it is now, and they didn't have to be as careful. There wasn't as mm-hmm. much coming out. They didn't have the literacy around it either, the way we do. And it's going to be even more when our kids are adults because they're generation alpha, right? And they're the second generation of being digitally native. So it'll be really, really interesting. I think there's a big backlash of phones and schools and how it's used in education. And I hope by the time our kids are in high school, (laughs) that's changed. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, and it also feels very cyclical where they're kind of the trend of, wanting to go like more analog. I know the experience of people wanting to be into vinyl records and like things like that. And maybe people will be more into, you know, traditional media or physical, physical media, you know, not yeah. just painting or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And specifically for cinema also, we can talk a little bit about, cause you, you've done previous to the Academy Museum, you're at the Broad. Mm-hmm. That's how you pronounce it, right? Yeah. Okay. I always was pronouncing it wrong. So now I stop myself to make sure it's correct, which is, you know, contemporary art Mm -hmm. and it has similar effect as cinema does on people, but different, you know, and so I'd be curious of what your experience is getting younger generations to sit through longer form content. Yeah. I think if there's a way in like a hook for some young ones is kind of like what is what is the story you know and kind of setting them up for success to be like this is this type of story it's an adventure you're going to see this type of journey and it's going to take this much time Mm -hmm. you know it's yeah it is kind of hard with time-based media which you know if we have a group of students that are looking at a painting it's they can feel like they've gotten all they can out of it by sitting there for 15 minutes and moving on or you know Mm -hmm. But with a film, it's really the idea that, like, this is a journey. Like, what mm-hmm. is a story? There's a beginning, middle, and end. And kind of letting them know that that is kind of the structure. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then you, as they get older, they you learn more structures. Like, you know, the, be- the end is the fr- first part and the middle is at the end. You yeah, know, like yeah. different directors that do that and the flashbacks and all that. But I think it's kind of really giving them the basis of the storytelling. Like that's mm-hmm. what happens in books, you know, and even though it's a time-based form, um, you know, you're going to get these kind of like rise and fall of drama and mm-hmm. action and, you know, resolution hopefully. So I think if they know the structure of what stories are or films are, I think mm-hmm. that would be, that seems to be helpful, especially yeah. when you do like workshops with the kids at the museum, you know, how to, you know, make your own storyboard. So you know that there's kind of these chunks mm-hmm. of the story that's going to be happening. And if they know that they can make one themselves, mm-hmm. then, yeah, it's helpful so they, when they recognize it, when they see it, like that's yeah. What's happening also. Yeah, I know it's, it's interesting. And I'm curious if you've seen how kids process watching a movie differently. I know for me, when I was in cinema studies classes and we would watch a movie and then we critique or talk and go into depth around it. I had trouble joining the conversation at first because I emotionally watched the movie Mm -hmm. and then I intellectually process it. And so I can't just tell you the themes. I have to like, you know, I remember it all and it's there and I'll get to it, but I have to process whatever emotional thing I felt before I can get to the intellectual. And I'm curious if, you know, you see how different people process cinema at the museum. Yeah, I think there are people that really lend towards their emotional viewing of something. um, And that's for all ages where people Mm -hmm. are like, it's resonating for them on an emotional level. And others are like, 
intellectualizing it automatically that, that mm-hmm. that's where they go and so I think it's just kind of like an individual thing and I, mm-hmm. you kind of witness it even in the galleries where people are watching clips mm-hmm. and certain things people are like really touched by or seem confused by or mm-hmm. kind of will read every single wall text to accompany the video and others are like not reading any of it they're just mm-hmm. wanting to see the clip they just want mm-hmm. the visual and they'll make yeah. up their own mind about it um, so it's a real big mix and I see the same thing with our students, like more high school age students also kind of just, it's, it's just so varied and that's yeah. what makes it really cool to have these discussions with them. So whatever they're bringing to the museum is just as valid as what they're taking away from it. Yeah. I've been studying, I'm writing something that's high school age. So it's Gen Z. And I think the biggest disparity I've felt between gener it's like getting every generation. I feel like the disparity and how they connect to the world is really different. Mm -hmm. And a lot of it has to do with technology and how we connect with one another. So I'm really curious as you've been able to watch high school kids and young college kids experience older films Mm -hmm. from a different generation and how they engage with it, how they feel about the craft of cinema versus the other digital video mediums that they're encountering regularly. And I'm just, like, I'm personally just really, really curious. Yeah. So one cool thing that we have going on at the museum is a teen council. Mm-hmm. So we meet with a group of high school students, about 30 of them, and they apply for this council and they, it's a paid opportunity. And mm-hmm. so they come on their own time. Um, we meet um, every month and it's a one year commitment. So we get to spend a lot of time hearing about what are they into? What do they like? What are the films? And I still surprise when they're like, oh, I love that movie and it's Chinatown. Or I, I love The Graduate. And I'm like, whoa, you know, because even though I was watching some of those movies in high school, I'm like, how are they finding out about mm-hmm. those movies too, you know? Yeah. Um, and I feel like they are really drawn to like older films and, you know, in some of those films are, you know, films from the eighties. So they're, mm-hmm. those are now considered older films. Yes, I know nineties <laughs> is vintage. So right. don't even. <laughs> yeah. So it's interesting to see what they're gravitating to and kind of like the through line. I'm, I've noticed in the last couple of years with the council is that they are interested in like, how are movies made? Like what is the process of, getting doing your screenplay like they're really into writing and Mm -hmm. editing and like they want to know about every craft like Mm -hmm. they want to know the whole picture you know some of them are interested specifically in like I want to be a director but or I want to be a writer but some of them are like I want to know every angle of how a film is brought together and so that seems to be the big thing of like really understanding each part of how a movie is Put like together. the actual craft of yeah. cinema. Ex- um, yeah, they're really into the craft and exploring and, what are the different roles. And, yeah, and like how the mise-en-scene comes together. Yeah. You know, from yeah. production design to... Oh, everything. Yeah, costuming. Yeah. And that's so that's really wonderful to hear. I mean, that's echoing some other research I did where Gen Z is really interested in the craft of things, mm-hmm. which in some ways is anti-digital in a lot of ways. And sometimes it's very digital because it's part of the craft. I'm so excited to see how they reinterpret the craft mm-hmm. with their tools. And I was just thinking like if they are writing at all or writing reviews, I would make sure you tag us because I'll push them out. Cause I love oh, okay. like movies from, yeah. from the perspective of younger, younger generation. And also I'm always trying to figure out when I'm going to show a movie to my son that it would resonate. And I think age, you know, and maturity, but, what are the themes that are important to them? And mm-hmm. um, and that's partly why it probably resonates. And I think high school is a really good time to get a little edgier in the movie mm-hmm. education. Yeah, for sure. They did um, a screening last year where they picked a film from our archive and they picked Stand By Me. Mm-hmm. And some of them had seen it and others hadn't, but they were interested in the themes of the film and the fact that it was young guys mm-hmm. and coming of age type story and I thought that was really cool and so they're going to do another screening this year where they picked a film and it's, again it's another coming of age tale and so I just think they like to see themselves represented also mm-hmm. they you know in an authentic way that it's not just like marketing to them because they're young mm-hmm. but that there's a story about their age range yeah it seems to be also be important to them as well yeah and, you know I, I talk about this a lot 
with, uh, with other guests, with filmmakers that come on. I'm like, where are those movies now? Mm-hmm. You know, those are the like, mm-hmm. yeah. those are like, with studios were putting out those smaller movies that really resonated, that were more family films, but, you know, like The Goonies, which mm-hmm. has some issues, and yeah. Stand By Me, and, you know, even like Now and Then, mm-hmm. and, you know, My Girl, and all yeah. of those movies, you know, were just so important to me growing up. And um, I'm not seeing present day ones. Yeah. Even Clueless, like those kinds of movies, you know. Yeah, definitely. And I hope that like this generation that's like in their teens now that they grow up to make some of those films. Because, yeah. Like they're they're wanting it too. Yeah. You know, they want to see that. Yeah. yeah. And so when you joined, I mean, the, the museum isn't that old, mm-hmm. you know, and then there was a pandemic and like right after it opened, right? It was like kind of yeah. right around. Yeah, it was still ongoing when the museum opened. And so our we opened in that September and then the following and then into the next year when I came on in February, we that's when we started all of our in-person programs, really. Mm-hmm because some of the first education programs were online. They were like mm-hmm. kind of webinar style. And so then it wasn't until the next year in 2022 that we were able to like have workshops for teens, mm-hmm. and have a, a council and have, you know, people come in physically into the museum and kind of engage with our screenings and our exhibitions. Yeah. I am. Um, I like can't, I haven't been able to go because I had a baby when you guys opened and he, he's just about old enough. He's two. So he's just about old enough to bring, but the family workshops happen during his nap. So I need a little bit more time for when his nap is over and then yeah. we'll do that. We do a lot of movies in our house and his second birthday, I rented out a theater and screened the red balloon for him and his friends. Oh, that's so cool. It was beautiful and cool. And I'm, I talked about it on the podcast a lot already because it was December, but now he's obsessed with going inside the movie theater. Like there's a little one, I live in the Palisades in Palisades Village and he'll go in and it, the ushers kind of at this point know him and they're like, they're cleaning a theater, we'll let him go and just like run up and down in the theater. But I so wish there were like early morning screenings that were a little less strict, stingent yeah. about sitting in your seat and just let kids experience because he watched the whole thing he just was up standing and then moved a little bit but he yeah. he was it was breathtaking for him yeah our earliest screens are 11 a.m mm-hmm. and we do one at the end of the month that is more relaxed it's more geared towards children who are neurodiverse but even so we have all kinds of kids who come because it does it is a relaxed atmosphere where you can get up and the lights aren't as dark and the sound isn't as loud and mm-hmm. It's just very relaxed um, yeah. day, morning. Um, but yeah, 11 a.m. is the earliest we do. But sure. I think in the, early that's in the a- summer, we're going to do some story hours that are like oh. around 10, 1030. So that's- oh, that's perfect. You can count us in. Yeah. <laughs> I'll send you all the info. We'll definitely be there. I'm really intrigued at what he's going to be interested in, like what aspects of it as he grows up because it's going to change over time oh. and we'll be able to start going to the movies more in about a year because he'll drop his nap and then i'll need something to re- relax us in the middle of the day definitely i loved once i was able to start bringing my daughter to the movies i was like yes it's time you know yeah. <laughs> well i think the first movie we took her to was um i think super mario brothers when it came out last year okay and we we're just like i guess this is fine <laughs> yeah because there's not much in theaters yeah. Especially like, um, you know, there's Pixar, the Pixar that comes out once a year or, you know, Disney yeah. movie. Yeah. Um, but how, so she was five when her, yeah. we first took her to the theater. Yeah. We tried when she was a little bit younger, but she just was like, it was too loud and she was like, I can't. Um, and it didn't seem like she was like having, enjoying it. Yeah. And then we had taken her to the theaters here at, at my work and cause we'll do screenings of s- certain films and then we did Wally was another one that she was able to like sit all the way through and like really enjoyed it. Oh, good. Like as far as a new film, like, yeah, that was, was Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> I, I was going to transition now into how you've been introducing your daughter to cinema and um, what kind of stories she's into and what that's been like, you know, between what there's so much amazing TV content for kids now. Mm-hmm. There has been for a while, but really now. And 
what has that has there been a transition between TV and film for your daughter? Yeah, I mean, it's funny. She really likes YouTube, and so she likes a lot of these, you know, where there's other little girls playing with toys, and she just wants to see them also playing with toys. Which I was mm-hmm. like, why do you want to watch that? That's I thought, you know, you'd want to watch a cartoon or things like that. So, but then you know, she'll go back to like other things that are, you know episodic on you know netflix or hulu mm-hmm. or whatever but um but for films it really started when with miyazaki films because we had a big exhibition of his here mm-hmm. and so she would come to the museum and she was really gravitating for it so i was like hmm, let me start showing her some of his films and mm-hmm. that is kind of like her first initial experiences of like feature length films at home um you know, Spirited Away and My Neighbor Totoro is really, mm-hmm. really loved. And so that was really cool. But yeah, so even though she'll watch things on like Netflix, you know, it's it's just not comparable to me. <laughs> it's like you want to watch a good film. It's different than watching like, you know, some. Yeah. You know, it's, show we, that I'm, like, I'm never, I don't even know what this is. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think my son is getting a sense and it's early for it, but like, when there's a movie, we cuddle on the couch and we sit back mm-hmm. and we watch it. And when he wants to play, we watch like YouTube garbage truck videos or yeah, things I that he's playing with, you know, yeah. Blippy. He loves yes. Blippy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so that, that's sort of the, there's a different vibe. Like YouTube mm-hmm. is like, you know, it's a com- it's giving them ideas to play. It's almost mm-hmm. like they have a friend in the room and especially for young kids. He, I think my friend, son is friends with Blippi like I think they think he thinks he's his friend (laughs) yeah I do I yeah I agree with that yeah it feels like it's more of like an active or it's in the background of whatever she's doing whereas yeah movie seems like time to 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 link into it yeah Yeah. and I find like early morning if he wakes up early he knows that like in if you're in mama's bed I'll turn on a movie and we can relax and I can close my eyes for a few more minutes and we watch a movie together all cuddled and I won't put on any short form content like it's a rule for me and because it's a different pacing it keeps it relaxed and you know and there's a point where he's like I'm ready to go downstairs and he'll get out of you know and so the movie's done but um and then, like, at the end of the day when he's tired after preschool or whatever. And, like, so it's a different tone, you know, the the movie mood versus, like, a TV time, play time. So yeah. I'm liking this structure that we're setting up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's some cute things when a movie's over, if he liked it. He goes, that was a good movie. That was a good movie. <laughs> yeah. That's his review. Solid review. Solid review. <laughs> So I'm curious, you know, coming on to do the programming for families, what are some of the core goals you have for the museum and for this programming? Yeah, I think the biggest goal for me was that it could be intergenerational so that even though like the kids are loving it, that the parents or their whoever adult is with the kids are, they're having a time together. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes I would see programs or attend myself and go and it felt very much like removed where it was like it's obviously the kids are a focus but then it's just like the parents just like standing there Mm -hmm. (laughs) so I like the aspect where it's like people are working together and there's a space for you know the mom or the grandma or the aunt or the friend and the cousin and you know so it feels like you're kind of having this whole you know family experience Mm -hmm. and it's all the ages can kind of get something out of it together and being creative together, Mm -hmm. I think is a a big goal of ours. And then um, making it just really accessible. So people feel that they can bring in their own experience to whatever they're creating with us in our Mm -hmm. workshops and our programs that they feel like their experience is just as important as what they're getting out of Mm -hmm. what they're seeing or doing. And so I like kind of that dialogue that happens um, with our, our content here. Um, yeah, I think those are the big things. So it's mm-hmm. intergenerational. It's very accessible. There feels, you know, there's, um, you're kind of meeting people where they are, you know? Yeah. You know, something that I, I love also that the teen council gets to choose, like hearing from the younger generation of what they want to watch, I think is a really smart 
idea and I'd be so curious to see the movies that they pick what the, what the next pick is going to be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I would also love to see like teenagers and younger kids, like them sharing their passion with the younger kids. Yeah. That's Cause like- I know, I know like my son, if a, a big kid tells him something, forget about it. <laughs> like, yeah. 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 The teens are really sweet. And, you know, obviously a lot of them have their own like younger siblings. Mm-hmm. Um, they have, we have a submission process to be on the council. And some of them made, of course, their little short videos or clips as their, you know, submission. And you can see them, they're like directing their siblings on how to like answer the questions or act out things as like to kind of show um, what their interest is in film. And so I feel like there is space definitely for that kind of like teen led, you mm-hmm. know, or for young ones or something like that would be really sweet. You know? Yeah. Or even like them, I would love, and I will, pu- I would publish this like their choice of how they would introduce a young kid to cinema because they're closer to it than right. I am. I'm like, what What was your first favorite movie and what made you want to apply to this program? And, you know, I, I would be so interested to, to see kind of how they would approach what we're trying to do with our kids, but they're more in, in line with what, what our kids are going to face in a couple of years. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, that would be really cool. I'm sure they would have really interesting answers. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I think that would be so interesting. I'm like, I've been toying with adding a sub stack type thing and thinking about like what kind of content I could elevate and, and stuff like that would be so interesting to me of just what the, these, the younger generation, you know, how, what films really touched them and inspired them and, and, and what that does. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely pitch to them. (laughs) (laughs) So what, what do you have that coming up that you're super excited about? Yeah, we have, I mean, it's for a little bit older, it's for high school age, but we have a careers in film summit in April where we have different panels where people can come in here from different Academy members um, a couple demos with like, you know, people who do sound design, animation, um, a costume designer will come and speak. So it's kind of like giving, you know, high school age students, you know, space to come in here from people in the industry mm-hmm. and to ask questions and kind of have that dialogue with them. So that to me is really exciting. We did it for the first time last year and it was really fun to see like, you know, because it's, oh, it's on a Saturday. So there was mm-hmm. families here. And even though it's geared towards high school students, we had a lot of all ages come and want to hear from different people in, in the different um, branches of the academy and really kind of zero in on what they're interested in. So we have mm-hmm. people who are really interested in visual effects and, you know, um, sound design and um, compo- um, a composer was here with us. And so it was kind of just like, again, those crafts, like the different mm-hmm. elements is what we're trying to highlight. So oh. um, not just focusing on like actors or actors, actors or actresses, although they're great, but um, knowing that like, if you want to be a filmmaker, there's many ways to be part of the film industry. And so mm-hmm. that to me is really exciting. And then we're working on our summer programming right now and like what will be all of our workshops for the for the summer, what will our story times be, um, our family matinee screenings. And so th- that's what we're working on right now, like looking towards the summer when the kids are out of school and people can come to the museum and just hang out and make stuff with us. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. Yeah. Is there like a teen-led film festival like of their work that they're coming out with they are they're working on that right now to do like um short films they want to do a short film festival where they will get submissions and then they will pick the ones that are going to screen and like so that's something that they're actually working on right now is that they want to launch for the summer and kind of you know hold court in in our studio and have a like a movie night where we screen all the little short films and popcorn and you know have a photo booth and so yeah uh, that's like a big project that they're working on right now last summer they did a series of workshops based on screenings um that were going to be in our theater but because they're they're two different count like one cohort 
wanted to do that. And then they kind of graduated out and then this is the new cohort and this is like what they want to do. Mm-hmm. So we kind of like let them decide like what is like the big thing that they're going to work on during the year. Um, and so that was like the biggest one is like, oh, we want to do a festival. <laughs> or like, well, let's call it a showcase. Yeah. Um, you know, there's no like prizes or money or, any, you know, it's more just like come and show your film, you know? Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I hope they have a little laurel that's like you've been <laughs> selected for the showcase yeah. by the teen council at the yeah. Academy Museum because that's like, that would, you know, if you're applying to film school, that'll help you stand out. That's true. You know? That's true. Yeah. We'll see what they, they come up with. They yeah. always have so many fun ideas and we just kind of work together, um, myself and another manager to kind of facilitate what they want. You know, mm-hmm. That's so great. And when do people apply for this program? They apply in June and then um, we make selections like in July and then they start in October. Okay. So this cohort started in October and they'll go until October um, and then they'll graduate out and then we'll have a new one start the same month. And, you know, what's the demographic makeup of the teens that are part of the program? Yeah, so the it's for um, 14 to 18 year olds, Mm -hmm. and we look at all of LA County Mm -hmm. basically Um, because it's an in person program. We we try to make it so that it's people can get here, so Mm -hmm. don't like kind of like go beyond um, that um, for where they're coming from. But yeah, we have kids coming from Pasadena, South LA, you know, down the street, you know, Koreatown, like um, yeah. East Hollywood. So it's kind of just like all over LA, um, yeah. some of the suburb, outlying suburbs. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's a great mix of kids and it's interesting to see how they interact because mm-hmm. they don't know each other. This is really yeah. cool. Even though we'll get um, submissions from some of the same high schools, um, you know, we don't know who's going to be chosen. So we try to, we have like essay questions and some do the essay and some people submit a video answering their questions and giving the answers to the questions. Um, but yeah, it's, they're all very different. Yeah. yeah. That's great. It's so cool to have something like that outside of school, you know, that like you can form friends and know kids from different areas and backgrounds. Oh. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it's fun to meet their parents, too. Mm-hmm. Um, they'll be like, I wish I had this when I was in high school. <laughs> so we get that all That's what I'm feeling right now. I was like, I, can no, I apply? I <laughs> <laughs> can we pretend I'm a teenager? Yeah. Oh, and we also have students who are like, they're like, I like movies, but I'm more into like music or I am a painter or, mm-hmm. you know, something like that. And that's interesting, too, that they're like, interested and they are like what is this about and mm-hmm. and kind of bringing forth their other artistic pursuits um, yeah. that's cool too because it's a good mix or students that are um more just interested in museums just like in general yeah you know they're like what's what's museum programming how do i get involved with that yeah so that, that's what's also cool about it is there's a mix of students uh teens that are very like zeroed in and want to be filmmakers and some are more like you know, into other things and they're bringing those interests. Yeah. You know, and there was a, a, a few directors that I've spoken to f- for this and one comes to mind, Deborah Campmeyer, who's a director and she spoke to how she was a musician and a painter and an actress and f- filmmaking, directing was the only art form that encompassed all of the art mm-hmm. forms. Mm-hmm. You know, it has fashion, it has music, it has all of the arts put together, layered on top, collaboration, and hopefully you make something magical. So it's really cool to have kids of different interests because that's what makes it interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I definitely see it the way they talk to each other and the things that they talk about. And I'm like, you got your film crew right here. You know, you got every element that you could do yeah. to make the film together if you want. Yeah. Something I think about a lot and me I'm growing up and not having uh, a film family, I'm not from the industry mm-hmm. and building my creative community. And, and whenever I feel a little lost or I don't know where I'm going, I like take a break and step back into my creative community and um, that's part of the podcast was just an excuse to call up 
friends when I was postpartum to be like, let's talk about movies. You know? I love that. Um, yeah. And so I love that this program is fostering a creative community from high school age that could potentially, you know, see them creating partnerships and interesting collaborations as they get older. Yeah. I, I love hearing their, their plans for the future together. I'm like, yes, you're hanging out together. You're doing things. Yeah. That's so great. And so you've had, was last year the first cohort and then this year is the second. Yeah. Are the last year's cohort, cohort going to come to the showcase? Or are they going to incorporate them in any of the, this year's um, stuff? So the, what, the opportunity that we did also is to have a few spots for returning members. Mm-hmm. Um, so they had to apply again. Um, so there's a few that are part of it for the second time. And so we thought that was important. So there was a little bit of continuity. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but we had also a lot that, you know, they went up to, to college. They're like, this was great. This was a great way to end like my high school like time. And, um, but yeah, then we have had others who are like, oh, I'm going to come to a show or come to a screening or I want to mm-hmm. stop by a meeting. And so that's fun too. So yeah, they'll definitely get the invite. <laughs> yeah and, and yeah or submit a short film yeah, yeah little alumni mixers as they yeah. get older <laughs> definitely it's it's really sweet i've had some that have that didn't come back and they have, have emailed me to be like how's it going what's new i miss it you know <laughs> yeah it's, it's great yeah that's wonderful i love hearing that it sounds like a very magical experience and at the Academy Museum, which is such a, um, such a, like, you know, it's a new institution, but it feels like it should have been here forever because <laughs> it's, oh, yeah. it's, it's so iconic of Los Angeles. Yeah. I think it's also because we have a really good base with our archives, our film archive, our library. Like, you know, we're just one part of this, like, you know, constellation of, mm-hmm. of, you know, preserving cinema and, looking at the future of cinema. So mm-hmm. I, I feel really lucky to be part of the whole organization and we look for ways to collaborate. And so that was one of the ways was with our, the Academy Film Archive was to have them come and have people from there come to talk to the teens. And it's like, mm-hmm. this is a whole other aspect of, of our work. And so that's really cool too. So that, I think that lends to the feeling that we've been around for a long time, for sure. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, the Acad- the Academy Awards is a staple in a lot of, of people's homes. So you kind of just mentally, there's a place for it, you know, and now there's a physical place. Yeah. And I like people knowing that too, because I think they're like, oh, I don't really, if they watch the Oscars or if they don't, but it's like, there's so much other things going on with the Academy that people are finding out more now because we do have a museum for people to see yeah. the insides of that and, and that history. Well, yeah. Crazy. And looking backwards into the archives and, and, you know, to the slightly more present, you see cultural themes so clearly of what we're grappling with as a society and mm-hmm. that can be pulled by the films that both grossed a lot, but also that won the awards that were really, they were a sign of, of what really touched people at that moment. Definitely. I think about that too, just this past Oscars, I had, you know, I watched it with my friends. I didn't work the show and I was at home. We did so much museum programming the week before. So I got to watch it at home with my friends and my daughter. And then after we watched it, we looked on YouTube. I'm like, should we watch another like Oscar? <laughs> we just like looked one up. We looked at yeah. the early 90s ones. And to see like what was nominated mm-hmm. and like the films that were nominated that year. I think it was like 92 or something. And we're like, oh my goodness, like you just like it blows your mind. You're like, what were we talking about back then? What was important to us? What was kind of like the sign of the times or things that held up now or things that did not hold up or Yeah. And um, the fashion. Oh (laughs) amazing, you know, before stylists it seems like, but it's also cool (laughs) because you felt like people were just like, Hey, I'm here. It's a yeah, fun time, you know. Yeah. So that's interesting too. And I love that. I love seeing all of that. All that yeah. This year, I actually did something a little different from my Oscar viewing. I was at our synagogue in the Palisades, and they had it on a big screen, and we packed 10,000 meals for, um, I wish I remember the hunger aid organization, but we all worked as a team, and it was on, and um, it felt like a really fun way 
to get together as a community and we needed the length of the Oscars <laughs> to pack 10,000 meals. <laughs> You're like, we know we got this three, almost three and a half hours time yeah. together. Yeah, for sure. We're That's- gonna get this done. In LA, it's earlier than on the East Coast. So it's the afternoon. Mm-hmm. I hopefully will bring my son to something like that in the in the future, but I had a sitter at this time because I wouldn't have been able to be effective. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but it was a really cool way to just experience it with a group of people doing something good and I actually went back and watched it again so I could really pay attention and see what those speeches were and who won what (laughs) and it was also fun to hear like and you know eventually I'm sure your son will want to watch it hopefully my daughter watching it with us and she'd be like how is an Oscar made and why do people want it and what you know like having like what is all this um, Mm -hmm. ceremony about and that's Mm -hmm. really fun And I was like, well, it's kind of connected to the museum too. You know, you come and see it and, you know, it's to kind of celebrate the films of the year. And and Mm -hmm. so, you know, it was kind of cool to have her kind of start to think about like, oh, what is, why is this a big deal? (laughs) You know, like, why is it, why Why do we, we... statue, you know? Yeah. And it's so much more than an an award because Mm -hmm. it's something that is a stamp in our time and culture. And those are the movies that as time goes by, we're going to look back at representing different times and eras. And so especially now having the museum puts it even into a larger perspective mm-hmm. that it's not necessarily just the winner, even all of the nominees are as, as important, but it's kind of culling important movies of that year and mm-hmm. having us remember them. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. So that being able to connect it to the museum for her, I'm like, you know, you've seen inside the museum where they have, you know, the Oscars history gallery. And that's yeah. part of it. This is now part of the history, you know? Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's really cool to kind of see that over time. Yeah. Yeah. It's very few moments in life when you realize history is being made, mm-hmm. which is kind of, it's nice when that's a positive thing. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's so rarely a positive thing. Yeah. So I like to embrace the awards of just let's celebrate each other and and create history. Definitely. Yeah. Well, this has been wonderful. I'm going to ask you my last question. <laughs> if any film at any time, it doesn't have to be at his age now because he's very limited in what he can watch. What movie would you recommend so that he falls in love with cinema? I would recommend... Um, Willy Wonka, the first one with Gene Wilder. Mm -hmm. Um, That was an early one for for me and my family as well. And it's just a whole other world. And it's, you know, silly and weird and interesting. (laughs) You know, there's um, the bright colors and, you know, just kind of that sense of humor Mm -hmm. that, you know, at any age, you kind of start to get like, oh, Gene Wilder, you know, he's, you know, he's funny. Why is he funny? You know, and Mm -hmm. my daughter's deep into watching that right now so it's like in my house every day and I I asked her I'm like why do you love what what is it about this movie that you like so much and she's just like it's funny he's funny like she's like it's just like a funny f- movie mom and I'm like oh okay yeah <laughs> um and I, it, I don't know, it's, it's so movie. imaginative yeah. that movie so yeah. I feel like that's a big part of it um this the whole other world and place and you know the color. Yeah. Look at think about the colors and the production design and the costuming and you know all of it together. Um, I just yeah. love that movie. I I remember watching it and then my third grade, third grade or fourth grade did it as a play, and I was I got the gum chewer that turns <laughs> into a blueberry, and I kind Violet. of yeah. I, yeah Violet, and I kind <laughs> of remember her monologue a little bit. But like, so that movie always had, like, I have so many vivid, like the smelling new, the wallpaper that tastes mm-hmm. good. And Mike TV, I think is a metaphor for everything in technology right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, definitely. It's not my TV. It's my cell phone. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, now it's Mike in headset, right? Like yeah, yeah. it brings him 3D, teleport him so that we see it, the same version of him in different places. Mike AI. Yeah, but, yeah. I think it still holds up. It's really fun, and um, yeah, I would recommend that for sure. Amazing. 
Thank you so much. This has been a wonderful Thank conversation. You. So nice yeah. to meet you and talk to you about movies and yes. all of that. And I hopefully will see you at the museum soon. Yes, please join us anytime. If you enjoyed the conversation, please don't forget to like and subscribe. New episodes release every Wednesday. And leave a comment and let me know which movie you think I should show my son. Until next time, take care.